welcome to my channel. I design fun and colorful ambigrumi crochet patterns that are great for any skill level. In this video, we're going to talk about how to read a yarn label. Have you ever looked at a yarn label and wondered what all of these numbers and symbols mean? I'm going to help you with that. Let's start off with why should you learn how to read a yarn label? In order for you to choose the right yarn for your project, you need to know what the different numbers and symbols mean on the yarn label. Choosing the wrong yarn can lead to garments that don't fit, amigurumi that falls apart, projects that turn out too big or too small, or not having enough yarn to finish your project. Most yarn labels will include everything that you need to know to make sure that that yarn is going to work for your project. This can include the yarn weight, the yardage or the skein weight, the fiber content and dye lots, washing instructions, and the suggested hook size. The yarn weight of each skein is identified with a little symbol that looks like a ball of yarn with a number on it. The number refers to the thickness of the yarn. So you can see here on this skein of Brava, there is the yarn weight symbol with a number four. Four weight yarn is pretty common here in the US. It's a medium weight yarn and it can include worsted weight yarn, which is pretty standard for amigurumi projects. You can see that this yarn is a six. It's a super bulky yarn and it's much thicker than the medium weight yarn. Most crochet patterns will include the yarn weight that the designer used to create the pattern. Generally speaking, you'll want to stick to something close to that. Especially if you're making a garment or something that's wearable that you'll want to make to a certain size, you'll want to make sure that it turns out the size that's intended. Using the same or similar yarn is a good way to ensure that your project will turn out to the designer's specifications. If you're making something like amigurumi where the finished size of the project necessarily doesn't matter, you have more freedom to choose different yarns. You'll just need to use an appropriately sized hook with that yarn that you choose. However, keep in mind that if you're creating a project with a pattern that uses a medium weight yarn like Brava, but you're making it in a super bulky yarn like Parfait Chunky, your project is going to turn out a lot larger. And the same goes for if the project is designed to be in a medium weight yarn and you use a smaller yarn like Animation, the project will turn out to be much smaller. The next thing that you can find on a yarn label is the washing instructions. So most yarn labels will have little symbols like this and some will even spell out exactly what those symbols mean. So for this yarn, it is machine wash warm and lay flat to dry. The washing instructions will tell you how to care for your finished project once it's done with that yarn. It will tell you if a project can go in a washing machine or if it needs to be hand washed, if it can go in the dryer, or if it needs to be laid flat to dry. Some yarns can only be spot cleaned, so you should always check your yarn label before you start a project to make sure that that yarn is going to work for your intended use for the project. The yarn label will also include a suggested hook size and also a suggested knitting needle size for knitters. This will give you a guide of what hook to use for your project. However, if you're making amigurumi, you generally want to go to a smaller hook size than what is included on the yarn label. Here you can see on this yarn label that a five and a half millimeter crochet hook is what's suggested. But if I was making an amigurumi with this yarn, I would likely use a four millimeter. Next up is fiber content and dye lots. Fiber content indicates what the yarn is made of. This becomes important when you're creating project that perhaps will need washed often, or if you're looking for a certain kind of drape for a garment. You may also want to avoid certain fibers due to an allergy. The fiber content is typically noted near the yarn weight symbol, and it can look similar to what the tag in the back of your shirt would say. So for example, on this yarn, it is 100% premium acrylic. This yarn is 100% polyester. Some yarns can also be a blend. It could be 95% acrylic and 5% wool. There are different cotton blends. There are tons of varieties to the fiber content. There are often subtle differences between each batch of yarn that's dyed. When you pick up a couple skeins of one color at the yarn store, it may appear to be all the same. However, sometimes once they're worked up into a larger project, 
you can see very subtle differences between two different skeins. The dye lot of the yarn is indicated by a number on the yarn label. It's often located near the name of the color of the yarn. The dye lot is the unique number that is assigned to each batch of yarn that's dyed. So here on this yarn, you can see the lot number here. If I were to be making a large project like a blanket or maybe a scarf that would require multiple skeins, I would want to make sure that my yarn has the same lot number on each skein. If you're working on a smaller project like an amigurumi where you're not going to need a lot of one color, you might not need to pay much attention to the dye lot, but if you're working on something that's going to require multiple skeins of one color, you should check to make sure that you have the same dye lots. The next step in learning how to read a yarn label is the yardage and skein weight. Depending on the brand, this can be displayed a few different ways. Generally, it will look something like this, where it will list the yardage and the weight in grams or ounces. So this Brava yarn is 218 yards and it weighs 100 grams. Where this Red Heart yarn includes both the yardage and meters, so it's 236 yards or 215 meters, and the weight is five ounces or 141 grams. Yardage is pretty commonly used to identify how much yarn you're going to need for a project, and the yardage on your yarn label indicates how much yarn in length is in that skein. And the skein weight simply indicates how much that skein of yarn weighs in full. That combination of length and weight is what's used to determine that yarn weight symbol that we talked about earlier. Now that you know the different parts of a yarn label, I'm going to show you some examples. The first label that I'm going to show you is for Brava Worsted Weight Yarn. This is my go-to medium weight yarn. Here you can see right on the front we have the name of the yarn and its yardage and skein weight. Turning the yarn over, we also see the color name and the dye lot number. And over here, you see the yarn weight symbol, the fiber content, the suggested hook size and needle size, and the washing instructions. On this Red Heart yarn, you can see the length or yardage and the skein weight. And over here, you can see the color name and the dye lot number. And over here, you'll see the yarn weight symbol the suggested hook size, the fiber content, and the washing instructions. And lastly, with Parfait Chunky, we have here the length or yardage, the skein weight, fiber content. Over here, we have the color and the dye lot number, washing instructions, the yarn weight symbol, and the suggested hook and needle size. And that's how you read a yarn label. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.